From the World Wide Web, this is Reflections of a Rabbi. One drop of honey makes a world of difference. One drop of honey makes learning sweet. Add one drop of honey to Talmud Torah, and you've got a team that can't be beat. All starts with the children. Open minds and smiling faces. Now what? Rosh Hashanah's over. Some of us have spent hours upon hours praying for a good new year, hoping that God will help us be better people. Now what? What do we do now that Rosh Hashanah is over? Now that we're in the Aseret Yemei Tshuva, the 10 days of repentance, now that Yom Kippur is looming down upon us, or if you're watching this later, now that the high holidays are behind us, now what? Well, along comes Rambam. Rabbi Moses ben Maimon from the 12th century comes along with some really good advice for us about how to take our words and have them mean something. Rambam tells us that real tshuva, tshuva gumura, complete returning, complete repentance, can only come when you find yourself in the same situation, able to, compl- to, to perform that sin again, to make that mistake again, and you don't do it. That's how you know that you've done tshuva, that you are in that same situation and you don't make the mistake again. What are the steps to help us get there? Well, Rambam gives us a few. The first step, he says, is stop thinking about it. Abandon it from your heart. Get rid of it. Whatever it is that you have done or that you're doing that is causing your heart to ache, anything that is keeping you from reaching the kind of person that you want to be, that you can be, the first step, he says, is abandon those thoughts. Get rid of them. Excise them from your life. Don't let them control you anymore. And then he says, you have to regret the past. Don't pretend like it wasn't important. Mistakes that we make are important. They're hurtful. And we have to take responsibility for them. And we have to regret the mistakes that we've made. And he says, Rambam teaches, that we have to both abandon these thoughts and regret the actions so much so that God, God's self, will testify on our behalf. And you know that God knows all the things that we're not willing to say out loud. God knows what's going on in our heart and what's going on in our mind. God knows our deepest thoughts, so if we're not serious, God's going to know it. We have to be serious enough about this work that God, God's self, will testify on our behalf. And then Rambam says, we have to verbally confess. We have to go up to those people that we've harmed, and we have to say, I'm sorry that I did this to you. And we have to be careful, because... Sending an email saying, I'm sorry if I hurt you. Or saying to all of your friends collectively, I'm sorry if I did anything to hurt you. That's not an apology. Rambam tells us, you have to know exactly what you did. And you have to confess and apologize for that. Just like Moses said to God, the children of Israel have have committed a sin. And then Moses says, they built the golden calf. Moshe doesn't just say they made a mistake. Moshe says exactly what they did wrong. Verbally confess your sin. Acknowledge that you've made a mistake. Own it. And then resolve to do better. And Rambam also teaches us that resolving to do better requires a little bit of honesty on our part. Let's not shoot for a goal that we know we're not going to be able to reach. Let's be honest with ourselves about what we're able to do. Let's be realistic about the changes that we're going to be able to make in this coming year. Don't set our expectations too high. Set expectations that are hard to reach, but are reachable. This is the time, my friends, after Rosh Hashanah, when we take the words that we've said and we try and put them into action. Now what? Now the work begins. Until next time. L'Hitraot.